Hello and happy June 6, 2024. Today is Thursday and we're super excited that you're listening to Biblically Centered Kids. This is Mr. Johnny and Miss Danica and we are super pumped and excited for today's episode. We've been talking all about stewardship this week and if you remember Virtue W says we wisely steward all God has entrusted to us being faithful to use it responsibly. Today is New New Testament Testament Thursday. Thursday. We will be reading some stories from the New Testament in the Bible that illustrates this week's biblical family virtue. The New Testament contains stories about Jesus' life and some letters and stories from his disciples after Jesus went back up to heaven. The Bible is a book given to us from God that tells us all about him. When we read it, we can discover what he's done in the past and then learn what he has to say to us today. So, let's discover God's Word where we find absolute truth, godly wisdom, and the unchanging promises of our Creator. Today we're going to hear a special story that Jesus told His followers. It's called the Parable of the Talents, and you can find it in the New Testament in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Okay, so you might be wondering, what exactly is a parable? Well, a parable is a simple story that teaches an important lesson. And Jesus often would use parables to help people understand God's teachings. This particular parable teaches us about being good stewards, which means taking good care of the things that God has given us. All right, so let's dive into the story and see what we can learn. Once there was a man who was going on a long journey. Before he left, he called his three servants and gave them each some of his money called talents. He gave one servant five talents, another two talents, and the last one talent. He gave each of them a different amount because he knew their abilities and wanted them to be responsible with what they were given. The man went away and the servants got to work. The servant who received five talents, well, he worked hard and used the money to earn five more talents. Now he had 10 talents in total. The servant who received two talents also worked hard and earned two more, so that he had four talents altogether. But the third servant was actually afraid. He didn't want to risk losing the one talent that he was given, so he dug a hole in the ground and buried it. He thought this was the safest way to keep the money. Well, after a long time, the master returned and called his servants to see what they had done with the talents he entrusted to them. The first servant came forward and said, Master, You gave me five talents, and look, I have earned five more. The master was very happy and said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with little. I will put you in charge of much more. Come and share your master's happiness. The second servant came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents, and I have earned two more. The master was pleased again and said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a little. I will put you in charge of much more. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the third servant came forward. He said, Master, I knew you were a tough man. You harvest where you didn't plant and gather where you didn't scatter seed. So I was afraid and I hid your talent in the ground. Here it is. The master was not happy with the third servant. He said, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed, you should have at least put my money in the bank so it would earn interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who uses well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from the one who does nothing, even what they have will be taken away. So, what was Jesus trying to teach us with this parable? Well, the master in the story represents God, and the servants are like us. God gives us each different gifts and resources. Some of us might have many talents, like being good at sports or music or helping others, and others might have fewer talents, but that doesn't make them any less important. The important thing is how we use our talents and gifts and money that God gives us. The first two servants were good stewards. They took what the master gave them and worked hard to make more. They were faithful and responsible, and they made their master happy. 
The third servant, however, was not a good steward. He was afraid and chose to hide his talent instead of using it. He didn't even try to do something small with it, like putting it in the bank. Because he didn't use his talent wisely, he lost it. God wants us to be like the first two servants. He wants us to use our time, talents, and treasures wisely and responsibly. When we do that, we show that we're faithful stewards of the gifts he's given us. And when we're faithful in the little things, God can trust us with even more. Being a good steward means taking care of what God has given us. Use your talents, help others, and always do your best. When we do this, we make God happy and show that we are trustworthy stewards of his blessings. Let's pray. God, thank you for everything that you have entrusted us with. Help us to be good stewards and to multiply the resources and talents that you have given us. Let us use all that we have and all that we are to glorify you. Help us to steward our lives well so that we can point others to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So continue being a good steward today, and don't forget to tell your mom or dad to visit biblicallycentered.com for some fun downloads about this week's virtue. We're so glad you joined us in the New Testament today. Until next time. Thank <music> you.